Hey everybody, welcome back to the workshop. It's really good to have you here today because I'm going to continue working on the 4x8 CNC router. Now, before I can start, I need to point one thing out, and that is, up until now, I've only been working on this side of the machine. So that's right, if we walk over here to this side, you can see it's completely untouched. So that means I need to install the linear rail, the gear rack, and the drive reduction system over here on this side. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I said that it took me about two and a half hours to drill and tap the holes for the linear rail, and then about another 30 to 45 minutes just to do the gear rack. All together, it's like 62 holes that need to be drilled and tapped. So I need to come up with a faster way to do this. So I reached out to Banggood and explained my problem and they sent me this. It is a Drill Pro combination drill bit set. And what they have done is they have combined a drill bit and a tap all on one bit. So I'm going to try this out and I'm going to see if this helps speed up the process of drilling and tapping the 62 holes that I need to complete the other side of the machine. So I'm going to use the same process as I did over on the other side. I'm going to set up the laser level, then I'm going to make sure everything is nice and straight and level and in the same plane, but this time hopefully it won't take near as long. That is so much quicker using that drill bit. It only took me 25 minutes to drill and tap all of the holes for that rail, and it took two and a half hours to do this side over here. Probably would have been even quicker than 25 minutes had I not broken the drill bit, and it was totally my fault. It's not because of a defective bit or a cheap bit. What happened was I was drilling out the hole, and it started to tap the hole, and the battery in the drill went dead and I let go of the drill. So when I let go of the drill, it snapped the tip of the drill bit off. Now all wasn't lost because I was able to still use the tap portion of that drill bit because of the way that it broke off. So what I did is I just went through and I drilled out the holes to the correct size and then instead of using that hand tap, I used that broken bit with the tap portion still intact and tapped out all of those holes and I was still able to do it in 25 minutes. Also on that gear rack, it uses a much larger screw. It's eight millimeters in size, which means I had to use the eight millimeter bit to drill and tap those holes. Now I was afraid that that large eight millimeter bit might walk around a little bit on me when I started the drilling process. So what I did is I drilled a pilot hole 
before I use the eight millimeter bit. Now this isn't necessary, but to get the accuracy that I need to make sure that that gear rack lines up in the middle and all the teeth line up, I went ahead and drilled out that extra pilot hole. So now that I have the linear rail and the gear rack mounted on both sides of the machine, I need to get some bearing block plates made so I can wrap up that y-axis and go on to working on other parts of the machine. So far in the project I've used the MPCNC to make a bunch of test pieces out of plywood and the y-axis is no exception. I drew this in SketchUp and cut it out out of some half inch plywood so I could make sure everything fits before I make it out of a stronger material out of something like aluminum. Now one of the most asked questions I get asked about that MPCNC is will it cut aluminum? I also did a review on the spindle that's on that MPCNC, and again, one of the most asked questions is, will it cut aluminum? And I have no clue, because I've never tried cutting aluminum until today. What I have here is a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of 6061 aluminum. It's 3 8 of an inch thick, and I'm going to go mount it up on the MPCNC and see if I can cut that Y-axis bearing block plate out of it. So I mounted that piece of aluminum on the MPCNC and then ran the program and I have the answer to my question, will the MPCNC cut aluminum? And the answer is sort of. I do have a working piece here that will work and everything turned out fine, but I did have some ups and downs along the way. So let me tell you what went right and what went wrong. First of all, what went right was you can see here these holes are very clean. It did a very good job of cutting all of the holes in this piece. Didn't really have any problems with that. Where I ran into the problems was when I actually tried to start cutting this profile out of that piece of aluminum. So as you can see right here, it looks like what happened was the chips got stuck down in that little groove that the machine was cutting as it was cutting this profile out. And I believe what happened was some chip welding started to occur. And I'm not 100% sure. Now, if you know, please let me know down in the comments or if you got any suggestions on how to keep this from happening, let me know because this is the first time I've ever cut anything out of aluminum on a CNC machine. So once those pieces got kind of stuck down in that groove, it caused the machine to start shaking and vibrating. And then sure enough, after it got about halfway through, you can see here where it started missing steps and it got off course. So the way I salvaged this piece is when it started missing steps and it went off course, I just halted that whole process and I took the piece of aluminum over to the bandsaw and you can see where I entered in here with the bandsaw and just went around and cut out that whole profile. And then I cleaned up the edges on the 2x72 belt sander. I am very happy with the outcome of this Y-axis bearing plate, but not so much the path that it took to get here. I would like to be able to do everything with the CNC machine and maybe even also learn how to chamfer the edges of the aluminum. And I'm not really sure if the MPCNC can do that. Okay, as of right now, I have one aluminum bearing block plate and I need two aluminum bearing block plates to finish up the Y-axis so I can go on to working on the gantry. So I do have another piece of that aluminum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mount that on the MPCNC. I'm gonna try and cut it again, but this time I'm gonna use some cutting fluid and see if that makes any difference. So I started the milling process exactly like I did the last time, except I did use cutting fluid and I was afraid that the cutting fluid would make a mess and it would just throw everything all across the room and it would stick to everything, but it really didn't. It didn't make any more of a mess than cutting this aluminum while it was dry. Now, I didn't have any problems cutting the holes just like the last time, but I did run into another issue when it was trying to cut the profile of the part out it got to about three millimeters deep and then it broke my bit. So I am using a specific bit that is made for cutting aluminum. Now I think the reason why it broke was the machine started to vibrate and chatter and I believe that vibration is what caused the bit to break. So you can see right here the edges aren't clean and it looks like the machine went back and forth right before the bit broke because this is exactly where the machine was when the bit broke. 
Again, this was not a total loss because I was able to salvage the part by cutting it out on the bandsaw and then cleaning up the edges on the 2x72 belt grinder. So now I have two aluminum pieces for my CNC router so I can wrap up this Y axis and go on to working on the gantry. I really would like to make the drive reduction plates out of aluminum for this machine. And if it's possible to do it on the MPCNC, I really would like to do that. So if there's anybody out there that has had some better experience cutting aluminum on the MPCNC and you've got some tips you can give me for what I'm doing wrong or how to get some better cuts, I'd love to hear from you. So leave me a comment down in the video or send me a contact request over on the Making Stuff website. I will put some specifics on the speeds and feeds that I was using and also that bit down in the description of the video if that can help any of you guys figure out what I'm doing wrong. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.